Hey dolls, so I am back with another video of just comparing the two cases um, that I did on my last video of Elisa Lam and Kimika Jenkins because I find these two cases to be some of last decade, yes we are in 2020, so some of last decade's um, most bizarre um, cases I've ever heard. Those two cases are very, very bizarre, very, very mind-blowing. Also the Kendrick Johnson case too, but that's a whole other video. If you want me to get into Kendrick Johnson case, let me know. But before we start this video, first of all, Happy New Year. Um, let's grab our coffee and tea. Today we'll be talking about five very creepy, um, like you can't overlook these creepy facts about the Kanika Jenkins and Elisa Lam case. So I'm going to put five for each. All together it's going to be ten, ten. But I'm going to, it'll be, all together it'll be ten theory, well not theories, um, creepy facts that no one really talks about. Um, but I'm going to get into it and, you know, so you might want to get, grab some coffee, grab some tea, get comfortable, grab a snack and let's get started. I'm not having any coffee today. Spoiler alert, it's just water. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first one we're going to be starting on is actually Kanika. Um, so basically I put the, a list down. I have my notes. So I have my list here. So basically um, Kanika has, um, to me Kanika's is really creepy, um, some of the facts that I found. So first of all, because I do like that first video and a lot of you pointed out things to me that I had not looked at. But, um, and I'm going to get into some of them. So with Kanika, her number one thing that was just really creepy was the video of her, to me, this is the most creepiest, is blurry. So if you go back, and I would insert them in this video, in fact, let me insert that video right now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if you watch that video, you'll see every time she gets close to the camera, almost as if she's aware of a camera, she's either like hiding her face or it's super blurry. There's not like a clear image of the face. Now, I do know that CCTV these days, even though it's 2020, are very blurry like they're it doesn't make sense why camera footage is that grainy but for some reason, like how can you identify this person when everything is just it could be anybody so to me that is the number one most creepy thing about this whole Kinky Jen Jenkins thing on the top of my mind is that we can't even see the face it's so distorted and so messed up that we can't see who that person is so that could be anyone that could be one of her friends pretending to be her and walking through the hotel that's creepy just think that's really eerie thinking about it almost like they planned this whole thing up once they know once they knew she was gone they planned walking through there to make it look like that i don't know but it's just creepy or did the hotel plan it because it goes back to that to me like are they in on it and they just got this one of her friends to wear her clothes oh that is really really creepy wear her clothes and walk into the fridge area and get it on camera because they knew this was going to blow up and come out in in the news you just don't know so that's really creepy to me the next thing is um the mother's emotions or lack thereof so if you watch the video and i'll see if i can put a clip inside here let me see if i can put a clip inside here just
Okay, so if the clip wasn't inserted in here, basically it's a video where the mum, they're showing the mum, which to me that, this is another creepy thing. Who shows someone's deceased body? Yes, I know she was found in the freezer, but you kind of want to take her out, dress her up in a, in, a, in the mortuary or something and not show it inside the kitchen of this hotel. It just didn't, doesn't, just... It just doesn't look right. Yes, I know that's where the crime, but that's an active crime scene. So why is that place not taped up? Why are they bringing in the mother to contaminate the times, to contaminate the crime scene? Like footsteps, you just need that whole place secured. How are they doing a body viewing or identification at the actual crime scene or at the scene of death? It just doesn't, you don't, even when someone gets into a car crash, they don't call the family to view it literally on the street. They dress the person, the, the, the deceased up and take them away. So to me, that screams really weird. It just doesn't, it's not normal. Like I've never heard that before. Literally taking them to a crime of the scene. Like, first of all, that's traumatic on someone's brain. Seeing the last place, this creepy, lonely looking kitchen and knowing that literally your loved one died there. So to me... That's just creepy. I can add that as a sixth creepy thing. The fact that they showed the mother the body there. So if you watch that video or if not, if it wasn't included in this video, I'll put the links down below. As you can see, the mother is running to, like not running, well, there's a video of her running through the hallway. But anyway, the way she walks in is just very, just very, um, what's the word? It's just unattached, it's unattached a word. It's just, she's just not attached um, some, will, some will argue, oh, it's shock or whatnot. But then it, when you now look at how she behaves after knowing her daughter's dead, like she's had time for the shock and everything to process. Process. She's like posting on Facebook. I'm sorry. I know so, if I know someone who died, it's just like a family member or something. You just don't. Facebook is the last thing you want to be posting on. People will post for you. So for the fact she's just having time to just write all this and post all this, like now, obviously, it's been two years, but I'm talking about when this first happened. Who has time to sign in, especially when you see them, your child died in a horrific way? Who does that? So I'm not judging. People grieve differently. Maybe she's grieving extremely now. Now time has passed on. But to me, it's just very suspect. And it made me question, is that even the mother? Is this the whole thing that is scripted and we're just being fooled? Number three. So Zach TV, I don't know if you're following this case hard. There's a man, there was a man on YouTube called Zach TV and he does like a lot of situations in the urban community. And um, he was covering, he interviews quite a lot of people. So he was covering this case hard and he, apparently he was getting close to solving what happened. So mysteriously, don't come after me anyone, <laughs> but mysteriously he died not long after that literally like almost two months after that because he was getting too involved in the case which is very scary what did he know that you know made people you know he just got shot so to me it's like do they silence him because he was doing too much because remember if you know this case in the beginning he interviewed monifa no irene who was at the party <laughs> and some two boys who were at the party so I don't know, but that's just very interesting that someone that was getting close to solving the case or really invested in the case just wound up shot. I know it's Chicago, but still, you know. The next one is the fourth um, very creepy fact or creepy thing that happened. Why was the hotel cleaning that night? That's just not normal. Like, why would you be... There's, like, videos of them moving stuff around there's even like this black bag and to me this is the most creepy thing i don't even i'm getting goosebumps let me show you i'm getting goosebumps let me show you look it's hard to see but i'm getting goosebumps just talking about it look 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 let me come close you can see can you see i'm getting goosebumps talking about this part so why was like there's a this, like why were they cleaning at night and there's a bag that they were carrying like on a trolley that looked like it could be I'm gonna try and see if I can garbage that's the first thing I want you to notice okay watch him look at that he turns all the way sideways and then watch him now okay slow it down I want you to see where he hits the now when he hits this shelf you see how much stuff is on the shelf it moved the whole shelf 
when that when her legs hit that shelf, it moved a stainless steel rack of several that there's got to be two, three dozen trays that have all types of other shit on there. He has to personally take her legs, bring them back from the shelf because it knocked that whole fucking shelf sideways. And then watch watch the shape of this how can anyone think that that is a garbage bag with hotel garbage in it? That is a body in fetal position or a body folded over. It looked like it could be um, a body like in a fetal position. So just that I think is the thing that just doesn't leave my mind is that that picture. And why were they doing a lot of like to me in a hotel at night time is the most quiet, creepiest time. Why were they doing all that cleaning at that time of the night? It just bugs me. What were they cleaning? Because in a hotel, you don't want to disturb people. So why was all that cleaning going on? So the next thing, which is the fifth thing for Kaninka, is um, the walking around. Okay, so this is my fifth creepy thing that happened. Extremely creepy and unanswered. Why was her friends, why was she walking around that long? And I said this in my first video about Kimika. Why was she walking it around the hotel that long without anyone not recognising security? Um, it was too much. She was doing, as all of you commented on that video, she was doing a lot of walking. Why was she able to go undetected? You know what, you know, you know when you're ever, you're in a public place, a hotel, a church, a shopping mall, or just somewhere, like an office or something, something where it's a lot of money to protect and stuff, and just a lot of people, customers to keep happy. Which hotel will want someone wandering around, stumbling drunk? No hotel ever in America will want that, because that's bad business. So how was she able to get away for, with doing that and stumbling, and who is watching the cameras? Or... Are they watching the cameras or are they busy following her? Only God knows how that was happened, how that happened and how that she was able to get away with it for such a long time before ending up in the elevator. Because if one person had just taken a look at the video, maybe we wouldn't have this Kaninki case. Maybe they'll have been able to get her into safety or call the police or something. If one person had looked, one security had looked at the video and be like, no, this is not right. We can't have a drunk girl walking through the hallways at like 2, 3 a.m. So, um... And how are her friends now walking around for hours too, looking for her and no one stopped or same thing. No one did anything about that. I don't know. So those are the five creepy things about the Kanika case. I'm now going to get into the five creepy things about the Elisa case. Um, let me know if you find any of those things creepy. Let me know what you think about those things I mentioned. And we're now going to get into the Kanika five creepy um things that i noticed about the, the five creepy things about um elisa elisa lamb which was um the you know you already know case um so the social media so i and this is just me personally because it bugs the crap out of me Lisa has an instagram which i'll try my hardest to find a link because it's that hidden that um people it's there trust me but her last posts were like leading up to the time she went to a hotel, but she wasn't posting around that time. So her Instagram, she has a Tumblr page. She's more active on Tumblr. Mind you that after she went missing, somebody was still posting from her Tumblr, but they said that you can like pre-post on Tumblr. So like, let's say I want to post next week. I can, I can schedule my post for next week. So God forbid if something happened to me tomorrow, that post will still go up next week. You understand? So knock that theory out that, you know, Let's not talk about her posting after her death, but it was very scheduled way in advance, basically. So, um, but anyway, the Instagram, I'm going to talk mainly only on about her Instagram. How comes there's not that many pictures? Of, there's no picture of her face on Instagram. It's just pictures of objects, like she'll take a picture of this pen or like her shoes or her hands or, but not really her face. So to me, that just doesn't, it's not normal of a 21 year old back then even now even worse now but not back then that's like 2013 it just doesn't it doesn't add up like and why would you just that just is weird to me so it just makes me wonder does she exist and if you look at many pictures of her which i should include in this video she does look different in each picture i've seen so i'm like did this even happen is this a real thing was this a you know 
I'm gonna, I think I should put pictures in this video so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see um she changed it like i mean people faces change but it just doesn't to me i don't know about you but she just doesn't look the same like i can't really get a good image of what she really looks like because there's just not enough pictures so um number two creepy thing number two is um in the cctv video there's a missing minute so if you watch my first video you'll see that i have the cctv where she's looking out of the elevator and in and out of the elevator there is a full missing one minute from that video. Now, if you know anything about crime, you need to have every single piece of evidence. One little thing missing could be literally the piece of the puzzle that completes, you understand? So um, to me, why would they hand that over to the LA Police Department and be like, here's the evidence, here's the facts of what we had last. Where is that minute? That minute, that one minute could literally be someone who did the dirty and did the crime showed their face in the video for that one minute that one minute that few minute, like one minute is very important here so the next thing is the elevator door closes as she leaves so a lot of you pointed it out in the last video and i forgot to point it out in that video so you reminded me why does the elevator okay so the whole time as you can see in the video she's looking in and out of the elevator um and having problems pressing the button and trying to close it how comes when she finally leaves, it closes and starts operating like normal, like nothing ever happened. But when she was in there, it was giving her the hardest time and it stayed open. Elevators don't stay open like that. They do not, I swear, especially in old buildings. They want to kind of shut quickly and get moving. So to me, who was holding that open? Why was it staying open like that? Like literally like for a full one minute or two minutes it didn't it just stayed open it didn't even it didn't close the whole time she was messing with it but when she finally left she starts working like normal so to me that's the creepiest thing one of the creepiest things about that whole case is the elevator and a lot of you pointed that out to me thank you so much for being observant and noticing that is creepy as hell <sighs> The second video is um no other video no not second video the set the fourth wait how many of us how many have we done of these missing the elevator okay so the fourth one sorry so the fourth one the fourth creepy fact is the fact that there's no other videos we see other than that elevator video of her so to me if someone is missing you want to have every single piece of pictures videos and footage normally in a lot of like a lot of missing people and crime and stuff that's definitely not the only time she's been in the elevator in that hotel so don't you think they'll submit other like videos that just is weird to me how they only chose that night that she disappeared why couldn't they pick other nights or other days that she was maybe acting strange or something like that that one video there should be more videos of her basically and then the final one which is really creepy it's gonna get the hairs on your on your arms standing is um, I don't know how much I believe how much I want to buy into this being connected but not long after she passed away there there was and because you have to remember this whole case this whole thing happened in the ghetto of LA like literally not far Skid Row Skid Row is really bad it's got a big case of homeless people and just drugs and prostitution all kinds of stuff like that so there was a test they were doing they produced a test kit for people i guess the homeless people in the area and it was for tuberculosis and guess what they named it her name backwards lamb elisa so her name is elisa lamb and they named it lamb elisa i think 
that might be up there with one of the creepiest things about this whole case is that a taunt what does that mean i don't know but you let me know in the comment section down below but that is just too convenient so on that note i am going to end this video if you enjoyed this video give it a big up thumbs up if you're new to my channel subscribe down below if you enjoyed like this whole idea of going through the creepy theory creepy facts about this case let me know and if you have more you want to know about this case let me know also stay tuned on my channel i'm gonna have more about crime coffee and chat coming up i have two missing cases that you have to tune into um so yes yeah, 2020 we're gonna do it big on this channel thank you so much if you're a new subscriber and i guess i'll see you in my next video bye lovey dolls